Hi, with me is Patrick Dessier, the legend of uh, game dev industry, basically the original creator of Assassin's Creed. Hi, how are you doing? I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good. Yeah, well, basically, I'm fanboying right now, so yeah, you must excuse that. One question, basically, Assassin's Creed, uh, just that initial input, what did, make, what did make you make that game? Uh, it's, quite, it's quite simple, I just finished uh, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, and I was asked to do uh, another Prince game. And I had a hard time coming up with a good idea about the prince. A prince is not somebody who does uh, a lot of things, right? It's, it's, an, it's somebody who waits to take the place of the number one. So he's a number two and he just wait. And so uh, I, was, uh, I was having a hard time just making a prince game. And, so, but I, and at the time also, we realized that maybe people weren't into fantasy. We have to go back in 2003. When the game came out, it took a, Prince of Persia took a time before it actually became what it, when, what it is now. And so we went into history instead uh, of fantasy uh, setting. And I started to read and uh, came up upon the, uh, uh, in a book about secret society of the myth of the old man of the mountain. You know, that, that, that really big mentor who would ask his soldiers to... to to jump in, into a leap of fate and just for him and that was the myth that Marco Polo uh, uh, not invented but uh, recalls into his book where the first time the words assassino was used and I said wow but that's in Iran and if you're the number two of the soldiers of this old man of the mountain you would be the prince of the assassins Right? And so you'll be, and since it's in Iran, this is in Persia. So you would be a prince of Persia, but you would be an assassin. You would be an assassin, an assassin. And that is a verb of action. And when I tell you you're an assassin, you know you will have to do some killing and being stealth and, you know, and say, and so this is how it came to be. At first, it was called Prince of Persia Assassins for a long period of time before eventually uh, Ubisoft at the time realized oh we may have a new IP which is great it's always better to have multiple IPs so that was the very the genesis of Assassin's Creed and then everything I couldn't do in Prince of Persia tried to put it in the game I couldn't do crowds in Prince of Persia on the PS2 so that's how I want crowds and I remember in Prince of Persia we also had like kind of village and where you would have to jump on rooftop to rooftop. We couldn't make it. It was not in the final games. So I said, oh, this time around, I want to do uh, uh, rooftop to rooftop uh, gameplay. So that's the, that's the beginning of, uh, of Assassin's Creed. Yeah, basically one of the most successful IPs in gaming. So yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. And uh, tell me a little bit uh, about Odyssey. It's a pretty unusual concept of the game. Yes. So Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey is the first game uh, we made uh, at, uh, at my studio because now I'm not at Ubisoft anymore. It's been 12 years, so, and I'm, I'm, it, it's my, I celebrated my 25th year in the game industry. I started in July 1997, so yeah, yeah, I'm an old monkey, <laughs> and, and so, uh, uh, so I, yeah, I realized that I spent as much time outside of Ubisoft because I spent 13 years at Ubisoft and now 12 years outside of it, so it's half and half. But in 2014, I started a, a game studio called Panache Digital Games. This is, this is the logo. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and our first game was Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey. And I realized while I was pitching games for the studio that I'm the historical game designer. And so people wanted me to do an historical game. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't have, I don't have the team that I had back, of, you know, when I was at UB. And I know what's tough. It's to recreate a civilization. It's tough. It takes a lot of manpower. And but when you create a third-person game, what you need to build first is the main character, and how this character interacts with the 3D world. And I went like, how can I have an historical game? and the, making sure that I build the tools and, and tool set to create other games afterwards. And then suddenly it clicked. I said, if I, went, if I go, if I make a game about past 
and prehistorical time period, I will not have to build a civilization. And the only thing we had to survive was us, our body, inside an environment. So I will create a character and an environment and everything in between. And, uh, and then when we st I started to study it, I said, it, I think it would be really, really interesting if we go way back. Let's go at the very beginning of it all. Let's go 10 million years ago when we were a big ape and suddenly we became something else. And let's play that evolution. And evolution is pretty much like a game progression, an RPG. It's like we tested stuff and didn't work out. But, you know, and, and, and today my, one of my game designers just gave a talk about how we use science to build up game design. And, and so it's really, really interesting. It was really a, 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 a big challenge to make it. And I want it to be fun also. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a game about... You, you, evolution and it's a game about survival it's a game ab about having your your clan with you it's not about one character it's about the clan and it's about players stories because there's there's no missions there's uh, no mini map we let you uh, survive africa 10 million years ago and you try to evolve for 8 million years so that's ancestors the humankind odyssey and it's available on steam PS4 and uh, Xbox One. I mean, it's such an <laughs> insane concept, basically. I mean, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, okay, now you're now working on another project. I know you cannot talk about it. Uh, any ideas when that might come out? Right now, the, the, the motto, the creed that we got is that we'll talk about it when it's ready. Uh, I'm lucky enough uh, to have an amazing team back in Montreal. And uh, we're really excited about what we're working on. Fortunately, it's not the time yet to, to talk about it, but I guess I'll be back at Reboot in, uh, in April, and maybe, you never know, maybe we'll, we'll have something uh, cool enough to, to show you guys and, and talk about. Cool, great. Thank you very much for the talk. Uh, talk to you then. Thanks. No problem. See you soon. Yeah.